What's going on, Banger TV? Hi, I'm Connor from Fussed and Buzzed, and I am back with another Overkill Review, Banger's weekly metal review show. Before we get started, just a little bit about Fussed and Buzzed here. This is our latest test pressing. I'll even cover the name so you guys don't know. I might have worn a shirt in a past review. I don't know. This record will be coming out, hopefully, at the end of March. We are just getting these suckers approved. This thing is a first time ever fuzzed and buzzed release. It's metal. I know, right? And we're doomers. Who would have thought? But all right, we'll leave that for later. So now this week I am reviewing probably the most anticipated record of 2024 for me. Uh, these guys are absolute doom legends. Doom, yeah, no, doom, stoner rock, hope rock, whatever you want to call it. This is their fifth record. Well, you fucked up. And hey, look at this here. Signed by the man, the myth, the legend himself, Wino. So the song and video you just heard is It's Not Okay off the latest Obsessed record called Gilded Sorrow. That video was from Freak Valley Fest uh, last year. Uh, one of my favorite fests of all time, actually. Ripple Music did an amazing job. Uh, so yeah, this record is out right now on Ripple Music. You can get it off of the Obsessed Bandcamp, off Ripple Bandcamp. You can listen to it on any streaming platform. Let's get going. Obsessed were formed in the late 1970s in Pontomac, Maryland by the last true outlaw rocker, the closest rocker to Lemmy we are ever going to get, Scott Wino Weinrich. A lot of you know him from St. Vitus, Spirit Caravan, right here, Spirit Caravan, Shrine Builder, The Hidden Hand, uh, that band with Dave Grawl, Proto, or whatever the hell. They were great, they rocked. So a little bit more about The Obsessed here. In 1983, they recorded the Sodden Jackal EP. The band broke up in the late 80s. We're talking like 1986, after Wino moved to California to join St. Vitus. At the time, a German label, Hellhound Records, and the booking agency that signed St. Vitus released the self-titled Obsessed record, The Obsessed, in 1990, which was originally recorded in 1985, prompting Wino to reform The Obsessed and release another record, Lunar Womb. After multiple lineup changes, the band signed to Columbia Records in 1994 to release their third in what most people thought was their final record, and which might also be the most iconic record, The Church Within. Soon after The Church Within, uh, they would break up and reform in 2011 and play some festivals and shows until releasing their last record, Sacred, in 2017 on Relapse. So a band like The Obsessed with, I think, the most iconic legacy in the underground hard rock scene, releasing four LPs, multiple live albums, a bunch of seven inches, and now for the first time ever, they are a four piece with a recorded album, their fifth album. I, I am beyond thrilled when I heard that announcement. I was going crazy. So let's get freaky and get this review underway. So finally, the Obsessed are a four piece. We're going back to the roots. You know, they were four piece in the beginning. They didn't record anything. And then they were stuck to a three piece for the last four records. And then now they're back as a four piece again. This is the first time we are ever experiencing recorded four-piece obsessed. Let's listen to Realize a Dream here as a four-piece. Seems to confide.
that sounded unbelievable, you know, those that twin guitar sound, something that the Obsessed needed, and it's really bringing in the heavy here. Them as a four piece, it's like really showing out Wino's strengths, and I find that Jason is really helping push Wino to, you know, maybe get a bit more crazy, man, maybe do this, because Jason knows his mu music theory. Jason is a, is a guitar teacher, so having a guitar teacher and knows a lot about music theory, now working with Wino, I think this is the greatest thing to ever happen, these guys riffing ideas off each other. And just like, listen to this, quote that uh, the man himself, Wino, has said. Adding Jason, a second guitarist, was one of my best decisions I've ever made. He's a virtuoso guitar player, and I must say he contributed quite a bit of good stuff to this record. He's not wrong. This record front to back sounds killer. It is heavy and the heaviest obsessed we have ever heard. Vocally, like lyrically, the, the lyrics are very heavy, but also musically, the music is just so heavy. Everyone is just absolutely killing it here. And the iconic riff legacy lives on. That is right, this album is non-stop riffing. Let's hear one of their singles here, uh, Stoned Back to the Bomb Age. Man, so like the first 30 seconds of that song have a bit of feedback. I know that they were um, experimenting with a bit new sounds on this record and I really like that. Um, it does feel a bit more experimental in that sense. And these riffs, let's go back to this song at the two minute and 13 second mark. riffs are crazy and this is one of my all-time favorite riff that the obsessed has ever created uh, I, I feel so lucky to be absorbing this record for this long and it's really showing that these guys working together now as I said as a four piece it is something that I am so thankful that it's finally happened these guys are really bringing in all this heavy and everybody is really complimenting each other which I really like Jason and Wino are able to riff off these riffs together and the twin guitar and the, the twin guitar riffs is everything that we needed in this doom scene and damn there is some hope on this record. All right, so on the last record, Sacred, uh, there's a song by one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, Thin Lizzy, and The Obsessed covered that, and it's called It's Only Money. I really, really enjoyed that cover because Dave Sherman and Wino, they were really splitting up some verses here. Uh, you know, Wino would sing some, Sherm would sing some. And something that I, I thought was very interesting here is that Jason really doesn't sing on any of these songs. Uh, I find that Jason's voice is really amazing on some of his other work that he's done, like some of his other uh, other bands in the beginning days. Uh, Jason's voice is fantastic. And here, listen to Jaylene here. A little lab out in the woods A couple pounds is the life to fly But Jaylene was small as hell And I kept her running fast But I would cook, but she would say oh, I should have known it could last I wasn't home when they knocked on the door with the battering ram. The jelly, hey, hey. The jelly, won't you help me understand? The jelly. So that is 
one of the most upbeat songs and I think that's a radio hit and keep in mind that song is about a meth lab. And this song in particular, I find that Wino and Jason sort of taking turns singing a verse here and there. I think it'd be really great. Like, don't get me wrong, Wino, Wino's voice is the most iconic ever. I love his voice greatly, but I do find that Jason also has a really great voice. And I think him and Wino splitting up verses would have been really great to hear. And I, I would have been thrilled. And I think everyone else would also have been thrilled to like really hear, you know, uh, the newest member or one of the newest members of the band, you know, taking some leads on a couple of things. I know he's taking leads on some solos here and there, but I would have really liked to hear Jason singing from his heart. So when you look at this record here, you know, let me just take this out, take this record out here. You got the lineup here. So we're going to like song number eight, and that is Yen Sleep. And many of you guys know that Yen Sleep was also on a compilation back in 1999 called uh, Incarnate. So let's compare these two, shall we? So here is the one from 1999. <laughs> And then here's the one off of the newest record here. Wow. Let's just say this is how it always should have sounded. It should have always had that twin guitar sound. And at the beginning of each of these songs, you can really tell the difference. And they're actually on Monday, uh, February 12th, there was a really great live stream that happened on Bandcamp where they debuted this obsessed record and all of the bands were involved. And something that was really interesting about seeing that is the bands were contributing to the conversations and everyone in the band did say that this is the best that this record has ever sounded. And also in an interview that came out earlier this week uh, on uh, New Noise magazine, Wino also mentioned that it just didn't really feel right, the, the 1999 version of Yen Sleep, and it really needed a proper home. And finally, giving it the proper home, uh, doing it right, you know, it sounds the heaviest it has ever sounded. It just, it made so much sense to me that this record, that song was on this record and the way that all of the other songs flowed into Yen Sleep and then Yen Sleep into the last song, it just, it is perfect. And everything about this song, I think is so much heavier than it was before. And that is the exact vision that I think that these guys were looking for, just making something so heavy and just really catchy. And Yen Sleep is really bringing that. Probably one of my favorite riffs off this record. So first off, let's just listen to Lucky Free Nice Machine. It's only a minute long. That song was done way too soon. With a riff that amazing, I, I just can't believe it would only be a minute long. It has a great backstory. It was uh, dedicated to Wino's wife, which is, that's so rad. Imagine being on the phone and then all of a sudden Wino picks up a guitar and you're like, Wino, where'd you go? And then he just starts riffing this song. I, I, I would be blown away. Uh, I, I really feel like this song could have been expanded on a bit more. Maybe that's a live thing. Maybe when these guys play the song live, uh, they're, they're riffing a bit more, you know, for a couple minutes. I really feel like this song could have been three to four minutes long. Wino the man sent this to me. I am a diehard obsessed fan, all right? Like, 
Look at this, dude. Like, here's a Spirit Caravan shirt, right? Like, I love these guys, you know? I've seen them many times. And here, check out this picture of uh, Wino and I in Maryland. Check out this picture of Reg, the CFO of Fuzzed and Buzz, myself and Wino. Check out Wino holding a Fuzzed and Buzz patch. Check out Bella slobbering all over me. Covered in your slobber. <laughs> Like I said, I'm a massive Wino fan, and I was so excited when this record was announced, and I was even more excited when Jason was in the band. I have so much hope, and I really feel like this is the greatest incarnation of the Obsessed that we are ever going to get. This lineup is powerful, and I feel like we can get another record soon, maybe another 7-inch. Maybe even with Fuzz and Buzz if you guys are down. But I would love to see more of these guys and I know that we are going to get more recorded stuff from this. It's powerful. This is, like I said, the most powerful foursome of the Obsessed that we are ever going to get. Uh, I'm giving this 4.8 choppers and that's like Wino and I riding down a highway, like, you know, like Easy Rider style. You know, we're side by side smoking joints, like 4.8 of those choppers. You know, this record is amazing, and in the, in the wise words of Wino, if it ain't heavy, it ain't shit. Now my favorite part of these reviews. The, the shoutouts. Shout All right, up first we have the Melvins. Yeah, and you know what? The Melvins are going back to like a five piece. This album is called Tarantula Heart, and it's on Ipecac Records. Uh, that's coming out April 19th, and that is with Buzz, Dale, and Steven, and now they have a second drummer, Roy Mayorga, from Ministry, and another guitarist, Gary Chester, from We Are The Asteroids. That is gonna be very cool. I, I love the dual drummer Melvin stuff. Nope, you can't really ever repeat that ever, so this is going to be very cool, and I'm very excited for that. This is a double mention. Sarah, you know, shout out to Sarah, also mentioned this. Uh, this is a band from Montreal called Tonar, and it is uh, La Nuit Sauvage, and that is a debut LP that is coming out April 5th on Cruise del Sur Music. Uh, that is members of uh, Cauchemar. They are also a Quebec metal doomy band. Uh, they sing in French, which is really cool, and this uh, Tonar, they are very, very hard rock, and I love this hard rock sound that these guys are doing. Uh, very highly anticipated record for me, and I'm very excited to listen to this full thing. And then up next, we have another Quebec band called Sons of Arrakis, and they have a new single coming out February 26th, and that is on Black Throne Productions. They have a new album coming out later this year. Uh, check out a lot of Sons of Arrakis older stuff. And also, we are hosting Sons of Arrakis and Salem's Bend in Toronto with Black Throne. There's a wicked tour going on, and we are so thrilled to be involved in this tour. Uh, check it out on Fuzzed and Buzz. The poster's totally wicked and I am extremely excited to party with everyone. It's usually three but screw it we're doing four. Up next we have The Endless and this is a self-titled and self-release album. It came out in January so it's out now. This is instrumental post metal. The cover of this record really suits the music in this and it is just it's really great. I love that instrumental stuff. It you know has a little bit of Mastodon feel and other like stoner rock doomy stuff. You should check it out, and that wraps up my review. This Obsessed record rocked. It will 100% be in my top five this year, no question. Boogie on. It's not okay if you don't see who's turning tail.